let's see here. Got this new book, Don't Get a Job, Make a Job. We're gonna talk to Jamie Van Wart, who's a designer here, and she's an MFA graduate from CalArts. Incredible designer, she's been working on her website. I believe there's some really good things here that you guys can see about how we translate wireframes into visual design. Stick around. Let me try this again. I want you guys to listen to me. Yeah. I design sandwiches. My name is Jose Caballet and I talk about the design of business. <laughs> the des I talk about a lot of stuff. My name is Chris Doe and I talk about the business of design. At the center of this operating system, it's about understanding. <clears throat> Jose, can we just tell them what the show title is? I hate you, dude. You are watching The Process. process. Hey, Jamie, I'm ready for you now. Okay. Come on over, girl. We're gonna take a look at some layouts. Not a lot of projects that I can share with you that I haven't launched yet. So one thing that I thought I could share with you is actually the redesign of our own website, the blind website. And we're in the middle of repositioning our company. So many of you guys that know about us would know us as a motion design centric company. And that's what we've been doing for the last 21 years. But now we're making this shift towards working with Client Direct. Uh, there's a lot of clients out there that aren't in that place where they have the needs of hiring a full-blown marketing or advertising agency and I think Blind can serve them well in doing rebrands, doing video related content, notice I didn't say commercial, video related content, and digital, collateral marketing, email blast, that kind of stuff. So let's take a look. Jamie, do you have a, a site map for all this? Well, let's, let's do a quick sketch of the site map because it's important for us to have a site map to look at and okay. reference. Home would be the first page you come to, mm -hmm. and then the primary navigation, the pages that fall under home would be work. Yeah, I can see it here, work, and then feed. Work, feed. Events. About. And then contact. Okay, we assume so many lands here, they want to know about the work right away. Yeah. Feed is a large bucket to contain all our news, if, uh, PR, whatever is happening that's news related, right? Mm -hmm. And then events, we're going down here because I'm gonna start talking about a little bit more, but things that we're doing outside of the office, lectures we're giving, workshops, TED Talks, anything. And it's not just for me, it's for everybody at the office. And then about is the typical bucket. What, what are we gonna find under about? Um, things like our core values or, or uh, our services, um, types of projects we would design like branding versus okay. services. Right. And people? Mm-hmm. That's the team, right? So that would live under there. All right. And then contacts, how to get in contact with us. All right. So this is the home page, the right? Homepage. Okay, let's take a look at the home page here. So walk me, so this is the entire home page as a strip? Yep, that, that would be the mobile version. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the, the mobile homepage, version. And then okay, the wide one is the desktop. Okay. So let's talk about grid systems real quick. So this is the entire site in theory, right? So mm -hmm. if you expand the window, close it, it's gonna re responsively design or reconfigure itself. And so I, I see four columns, one, two, three, four. And so when you look at the mobile, it's cut down to two or one, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a number that works and it seems to be holding up in the mobile part of it. What are we looking at up here? What is this? Uh, that top section I think we usually refer to as the hero. And in our case, uh, we wanted to both show the work, yeah. or images from the work. We want to make a strong opening statement about who we are and what we do. And then for those users who don't scroll all the way down to this work section, we wanted to give them a way to jump right to specific types of our work. And a lot of web terminology is borrowed from newspaper editorial layout. They still refer to this as the masthead. That's from a newspaper terminology and what they consider above the fold. So I, I think above the fold is probably here, right? So you're gonna see the featured image. Mm -hmm. So everything above here is really important because if somebody hits your site, if they don't see what they wanna see, if they don't hear what they wanna hear, they never go below the fold. We're using a lot of just placeholder images, right? Because I haven't written the copy. Right. And so you've designed a framework to accommodate that and these parts may expand or contract depending on what we ultimately come up with in terms of content. So I think this is beautiful. It's a full bleed image. It's very simple, it's striking, and finding the right image to go there is important, but more important is the headline. The headline is a thing that's designed to grab your attention, to drive you deeper into the site. If we lose somebody right here, there's no point. And so the attention, and then maybe there's some 
detail that we need to add, it's going to get my attention and then I have to talk about what it is. We'll get into that a little bit. And so here, what is this? Talk to me about what this is. Um, that would be featured work. So we would choose, we would curate the projects and provide a grid of thumbnail images to link to those projects that okay. were the projects that we were, that we wanted people to see. So then we would have to tell the developer to create some kind of sorting system mm -hmm. so that we can tag things as featured but then we can also change it. So maybe it defaults to chronological, but if it's assigned a number, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever it is, then it will display in that hierarchy. So image number one will go here, two, three, four, right? right exactly. And there's another link here. I see this. This says view all projects right here. That's another way, I assume, to take you to the work page. Mm -hmm. So another thing about user experience design is to give people multiple ways of finding something, especially if at this point they've had enough information or they want to dig deeper, it's there. You don't have to make them scroll back up and find things. And then you have an area here, which is commonly referred to in our industry as a logo quilt, like a quilt, a patch of frame, uh, fabrics sewn together. This is a logo quilt. Why would you include a logo quilt? Why do companies even include a logo quilt to begin with? The reason why they do that is because we need to have validation. Companies like to work with other companies that have a proven track record. They also want to know that you've worked with companies like them in their specific vertical, but also on their size and stature. And so if we have worked with some people like Sony, NFL, Microsoft, Audi, Google, Electronic Arts, that's a pretty good calling card. And you'll notice that smaller companies, smaller firms have much smaller companies represented there. And these are actual real clients we've all worked with. So these are not fake ones where you know, we deliver the mail there and we, we add their logo, which some companies do. And the problem with doing something like that is that if they ask you for more specific details, you'll be caught not telling the truth. All right. And then we have featured articles. These would be articles like um, that we might write oh, okay. for uh, All right. an external source like Medium that might be published there okay. or more in-depth um, articles about, like I know you have a couple about typography. That's right. So they wouldn't just be you know, a news announcement, but they would go deeper into some topic that we want to share. Okay, excellent. This is a singular experience and we, me personally, I prefer these kinds of websites where all the person has to do is scroll down with their mouse and then they get the information in tiered stages. So you're telling the story and you're just telling it kind of one screen at a time. The important thing at the bottom right here, I want to point this out guys, is a call to action. Right now, presumably, we want them to call us. So there probably needs to be a clearer thing, like call us, email us. And the last little bit here is give us your email address. We'd like to put you on to our email list. We're not gonna spam you, but we create a little newsletter. It's gonna hit your inbox maybe once or twice a quarter at max. And that's how we can talk to you, have a real conversation with you. What other page um, do you think we should look at? Let's go through a specific flow. So if I were to click on the work link in the navigation. Okay. Um, we've got one of the things that we want to change. In the top nav? In the top nav. Okay. Is distinguishing different types of work. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, clicking on the work link would bring up this kind of secondary navigation. Okay. Where we've got projects divided into different categories. So um, featured projects would be what we just talked about with the this set module feature. up here where okay. we decide these are the projects we want right. to feature. Right, right. Um, the second type of project would be a case study, which we can talk about in a bit, but these are more about bigger branding projects that would involve not just uh, a logo, but uh, also a website design, um, like an iPhone app, maybe environmental graphics, those kind of things. So it's kind of solving you know, a more complicated problem. Right. And then the last uh, page would just be all projects. Okay. Um, and these would be filterable by categories. This is important because people that come to your site and want to look at your work, they want to find something very specific. A music video, a commercial, branding, identity, web, theatrical, whatever it is that you do. And so this allows them to sort the content specific to their needs. You have to keep in mind, user experience is designing for the users, guys. So that means giving them what they want in the fewest number of steps. And so people want to see projects like the one they're envisioning in their mind. So if you can do that, in the least number of steps, you're going to do well for yourself. I want to point this out because these are all just image based. It's hard to see in black and white like this, but you'll see it much better on the digital version is when you hover over, it's going to give you some information so that we don't have to deal with the 
the layout being cluttered with a lot of typography. I also assume there you have a dim thing going on mm -hmm. where the image dims down, like it gets darker so that you can read the type. Right. So those are little notes you're going to make for your developer, okay? Yeah, and that might need to change a little bit on the mobile version since there's no equivalent of hover, but right. we'll address that when we work on those, okay. those screens. The one that I'm most interested in yeah. is the case study because the case study allows us to tell the story of what it is we did. It allows us to show a lot more of the process because when you look at something like this, and you're from a client's point of view, you might be thinking, well, what did they really do here? And it's hard to tell. On a commercial, you kind of know what we did what we didn't do. And a lot of people misrepresent what it is that they do. Again, they designed a logo or they did the development. But what we're doing here in a lot of these case studies is we're showing how we took something from a strategic point of view due to the discovery. Through the discovery, we figure out the messaging, the positioning, even sometimes naming figuring out what the identity system looks like, who the customers are, and we want to tell a little bit about that story because that's where we're heading anyway. So the case studies are more important to me. This is the actual case study page um, and comparing it over here to more of a standard project, you can see a couple key differences. Um, the first one is just that we, we're establishing this introduction block. So right away, we'll talk about who the client is, maybe what categories the project falls into or which um, services we provided for the client, and then immediately after will be a description about a specific challenge associated with the project, and then how we solved it in a really succinct way. Okay, super hard for me to see, but it says what? Client, challenge, challenge solution? Solution or outcome. Or outcome, okay, I like that. Here's one thing as designers, what we get to do with type. We get to make it more dense or less dense. How do we make it more dense? Well, we extract more information than what was given to us. So in this case, it's really about having a block of copy and Jamie was able to extract like let me pull some things because I like having chunks of information. I like breaking up this monolithic structure of one column grid and I want to have some variation to it. So we have a nice headline, a subhead, and we have some detail callouts, kind of like a caption or a byline mm -hmm. that you would see. And then you have an, another little bit here, a kind of a bullet, and then a body, block of body copy. And so all those things make the page interesting. Right, it's so instead of having a really long paragraph that's the entire description of the project, we can break up the text so that uh, the text corresponds to the image it's paired with. So you always have a context for the images and the text together. It's easier to digest. Great. So breaking down the, the information, including large scale images, and having section breaks like this help to give it more of an editorial mm -hmm. kind of a newspaper feel, it makes the information a lot more digestible. Uh, I don't know about you guys, when I see a big block of copy, somebody hasn't edited it or some designer hasn't worked on it because the web is not designed for giant blocks of copy like this, unless you're on the Wall Street Journal or LA Times or something. Watch out for the big blocks of copy. All things considered, this is a really beautiful layout. I think there's enough design sensibility in here, but without making it impossible to program for, because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of overlapping images and type. That's usually where you get into a lot of problems. All right, beautiful. So this is multiple examples of the system being played out, or are these options for me Right, to this would be more of a standard project, so. Okay, um, oh, this is a case study? Yeah, this is a case study, okay. so I'm incorporating some other uses of typography, including a caption, um, block quotes, or larger pieces of text, and maybe a little more variation in the use of the grid, so mm -hmm. the images can be spaced out and balanced. Um, more typical project where maybe it's a lot more images than text would just, you know, it would be a constant flow of images that, that doesn't have quite as much variation. So this is the image carousel? Right. All right, we're trying to systemize this a little bit more. These are a little bit more custom, mm -hmm. uh, whereas these can fit within a template or two and, and we can solve most of what we need. Exactly. Okay, great. Now I want to talk about specific content. I've been thinking about what are the things that are going to get people to pay attention? So let's brainstorm together, okay? Why are you grimacing? Don't grimace, it's okay. The grid, the design is impeccable. Now we have to think about how can we say something to draw somebody in? And I, I was thinking about what it is that we do. What is it that's our value proposition? How do we improve the lives of our customers? How do we, how do we make the jobs easier at home and at work and create wins for them? How are we gonna do that? I'm gonna say, I wanna do something provocative. I'm going to say um, something like, you know, like, hello, we are blind, something like that, something very friendly. 
and I'm going to say we build bridges. So somebody's going to look at that and say, what do you mean you build bridges? I don't mean the bridges that connect land masses. That's typical. We build bridges between strategy, conceived. You OK? Mm -hmm. So we know that there are agencies who come up with strategy and have an incredible concept. But somewhere along the way, there's a gap between strategy conceived and strategy executed. Okay, So those are the bridges that we build. We build bridges between, and I think this could work. Because I, if I can do two or three of these, I, I know that the flow is going to work. Mm -hmm. Between brands and what? We build a bridge between brands and users. Users. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just use the word customer. All right. What else do we build bridges between? Strategy conceived, strategy executed. So concept and execution, brands and customers. What else can we do? Goals. I like that. I like the way you think. Goals. So you have a goal. Versus results. Results. I like that. Nice. And then what we want to do is, in the body copy, we have to explain what the heck are we, what are we talking about, mm -hmm. okay? And so I think that's the framework. So do you imagine that each one of these pairings would be kind of its own content block? I think so. Okay. But it could just be a simple image with this, the key idea. And then the meat of it will be here. Okay. In terms of that. So like I said, this part will be flexible depending on our deck and how we want to talk to people. Right? So we could say something like, we build bridges between strategy conceived and strategy executed. Because we all know um, that coming up with an idea is not the end of it. And this is where most companies fail. And blah, blah, blah. So we would explain that. We, we build bridges between brands and customers. We help you identify who your customers are, what they want, and solve those kinds of things. Goals and results. Because we believe that design should matter in ways more than just aesthetic value. And what we do gets our clients results. So we're That's not good. talking about building bridges between land masses. But Even getting, though there are land masses in my placeholder. <laughs> right, right. It's just a gap. It's a concept. It's not literal. right? And there wasn't a bridge either, so that's okay. Um, but we're not talking about building bridges between physical things. We're about ideas, goals, results, all those kinds of things to connect. What we believe is, is connecting or something. And that's how we finish it off, okay? And if, you, if you'd like to see how, talk to us. Okay. Here's who we've worked with before and that kind of stuff. Here's the thing that a lot of designers and design companies don't get. They think the work product is what you sell. It's not what you sell. The work product is the byproduct of the approach that you take. So in this case, we need to give a contextual lens as to what it is that we're doing. And this is the example, the proof. What we do is we help companies articulate their ideas in a visual way. And we're going deeper now, doing strategy. So now we have to talk about that. We have to talk about how we do it and why it matters. We're going to start to sound different from the way we used to sound. The way we used to speak was, this is cool. This is an Xbox thing, <laughs> really awesome. And it's really wonderful work. And we partner up with an agency. That's all good. But we're finding that now in the 21st century, in 2016, to be relevant, I think this is just my opinion, to be relevant, you have to be able to offer other services that position you as a company that is to be valued for your ideas and for your thinking. There's lots of ways to get there. This is just one way. All right, guys, I hope you found this particular episode on looking at a web design and going a little bit deep. I know we didn't do that much critiquing, but it's because the design was already solid, and Jamie's been working on this for some time. But hope you find it to be helpful. Comment below if you like it. Let us know if you want to see more things like this. Till next time, see you guys later. Goofy off. Turn smile. it off now, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom in tight. Turn it off.